Good morning, good everybody. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are so glad to be with you this morning. It's been quite a busy week with Worship Wednesday, our carol concert, our uh, release of our carol album, and now this morning. But what an amazing moment that we have to be able to pause, to be able to stop. I know many of you have got stuff going around in your heads, shopping lists, things to do. But right now we have the opportunity to actually stop for a minute and lift our eyes on Jesus. And that is such a uh, privilege privilege for us to be able to do that this morning. So I just want to encourage you, wherever you are, if you've just about made it, landed on the sofa, take a breath. Let's breathe in and uh, let's just consider our wonderful God together. Psalm 105 says this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually, remember the wondrous works that he has done. You know, we have had a really good week together. I forgot to introduce myself. My name's Lou <laughs> and this is Nathan. Hi but those of you who are new this morning, welcome. Um, and uh, we, we have an opportunity this morning to seek his face. We have an opportunity this morning to remember the wonderful things that God has done. So that's what we're going to do together first by singing together. Oh, we worship you this morning, Lord. We will remember who you are and what you have done. Seek your face again today, Lord. Holy Spirit, come, pour yourself upon us again. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider. Yeah. 
sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee.
my heart is celebrating. It's such good news this morning that we cannot earn our salvation and therefore we do not need to try. It's like, man, I'm never going to qualify in my own strength. I'm never going to be able to be right before God because I've done enough. This is such good news again for me this morning to remember, man, I'll never be good enough but it's okay because of what Jesus has done. He's the only savior. He's the only rescuer. And he chooses to rescue us today. He chooses to reach down and lift us out of that pit and set our feet on solid rock. He chooses to do that for you today. He's done that for you. And that is the the wonderful thing we can celebrate. You know, we've been singing and speaking uh, all week about Jesus, the light of the world coming into this darkness, into the world that's currently is broken, that currently is desperate that you know there's a lot of despair around right now but actually Jesus a rescuer comes to lift us from that pit of despair where maybe we feel like we can't get out we're scrambling we're scrambling we're stuck but actually he reaches down and he pulls us out from that pit and he sets us on a firm place and that firm place is him this morning he wants to lift off those chains those weights again off you that you are carrying the things that you're holding on to he wants to lift those chains those weights off again release you from trying to save yourself just lift your hand to him and let him pull you out he wants to pull you out from the pit of despair again today and set your feet upon a rock let those chains that are binding you the things that are weighing you down be lifted off in the name of our jesus in the name of jesus our savior chains are breaking and falling off this morning throw the weights through the shackles off receive the love the grace the peace the hope that he has for you again in jesus name come and know of Jesus, know the grace of Jesus, and know the grace of Jesus, yeah, yeah, oh, cause even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear, and even when I'm called in the middle of the storms of this life i won't turn back i know you are near and i will fear no evil 
before my God is with me. And if my God is with me, then whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Cause oh, see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on and there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes still I will praise you still I will praise you oh I can see a light and I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on and there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you, still I will praise you. Cause oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm.
This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yeah, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. So this is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Cause oh no, you never let go And through the calm and through the storm Oh no, you never let go Every high and every low Oh no, you never let go Lord, you never let go of me Yeah, 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 yeah. grateful that we're surrounded by you, that you hem us in today. Thank you that you never, ever let go of us. Thank you, Lord. As our burdens grow greater, He sent us more strength as our labors increase. To added afflictions, He offers more mercy. To multiply trials, He multiplies peace. When we have exhausted our store of endurance, when our strength has failed and the day is half done. When we've reached the end of our earthly resources, the Father's forgiven is only begun. The Father's forgiven is only begun. So lean hard, lean hard, lean on the everlasting arms. His power has no boundary that's known unto men. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. He giveth and giveth and giveth again. So
why don't you receive his mercy as we just sing this round and your mercy flows like a river your mercy flows like a river your mercy flows like a river on us one more time your mercy flows your mercy flows like a river your mercy flows like a river your mercy flows like a river on us god we want to thank you that you are our strength today you're our grace and that your grace is sufficient We thank you for the moments that we can come and draw from you and rest in you and remember your greatness. And remember that you love to lavish yourself on us, that you love to pour out your riches again and again. I thank you that when we've reached the end of our, what we feel is our own personal strength and our own, own storehouse, actually you've just begun to start giving your grace. And I, I pray help us to, to, to continue to lean into you at the start rather than at the end to keep replenishing, to keep filling up, to keep remembering, to keep reminding, to keep enjoying who you are in the middle of all of this stuff that's going on in our lives. We want to enjoy you for you, for how great you are, for how wonderful you are, for how beautiful, how glorious you are. We ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've got some more great things in store this morning for you. I've got the wonderful Martha Collison, who's going to be next up. I'm going to be interviewing her. And then I've got a, a word to share with you. So don't go. Don't go and uh, leave us this morning. We want you to stay uh, tuned in because we have still some great things for you. Well, this morning, I am so excited because I've got a lovely guest here with me. She is a baker. She is a youth leader. She's an amazing singer. She's also an amazing woman of God. And I get to join with her this morning to chat through a bit of baking and a bit of her story about her faith. So welcome, Martha. Thank you so much. It, How exciting. I know. It's so good to see you. I thought we'd go for something a bit different. So we've got our pinnies on this we morning, do, which are lovely. Ho, ho, ho. And um, <laughs> we are going to decorate some biscuits while we chat how how good are you at chatting and and um, baking at the same time Have i've got... learned over the years to do the multitask yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed still not really good at it. i'm impressed i'm terrible at it so <laughs> if i suddenly stumble or stall you'll know why but basically what we're going to do is we're going to decorate some biscuits now You bought yours, Martha. What have you bought with you? I did. So I've made some gingerbread. It's quite a classic gingerbread. Um, made into little stars. Nice. And I've put a little hole in just using a chopstick or a skewer or something before you bake so that you can potentially hang them on your Christmas tree. Nice. If you're proud of them. And does know? the hole stay or do you need to leave something in it? Um, when it you kind bake of it? stays, but when they come out of the oven, they're a little bit warm. So you can kind of just ah, like doctor a little bit, add a little bit of extra good. hole. And I have prepared um, some other gingerbread, slightly more classically burnt gingerbread. I might have got slightly distracted yesterday. I don't know about you, but sometimes I put something in the oven and if I forget to do the timer, um, things go slightly awry. So I've got the slightly um, brightly burnt star <laughs> to decorate. And also I've got the gingerbread man who appears to be moving and dancing at the doing same a time. Dance. Doing a little dance. <laughs> I love that. But anyway, they will, they will taste good. And so what we're going to do is we're going to decorate as we go along. So in a minute, we will show you what we're up to. Um, and you can give me some top tips on how to make it look oh, nice, really? Martha. But we're going to keep a metre apart. I hope that you know we are a metre apart and uh, we will keep nudging our way this way. Yeah. So as we begin... I'm going to pick up this and give it a go. Yeah, we've got our icing. We've got our icing. I've got a snowman, actually. And we've um, got to get creative. What, what I would love to find out from you, Martha, one of the key things that um, obviously has impacted your life um, since you were 17 mm, was yeah. being part of the Great British Bake Off. You were the quarter finalist and you were one of the youngest ever quarter finalists, in fact, contestants. Yeah, I mean, I was. I was 17 and I didn't quite know what was coming for me, if I'm yeah. honest. <laughs> yeah. I just loved baking. So all my friends were like, do you know what? You should try it. You should enter. Just see how it goes. I didn't tell my parents. I just entered. You didn't tell your parents? No, I didn't. <laughs> I was supposed to be revised I my exams. I didn't know that. <laughs> <gasps> That's 
so naughty. Do be... not do this, children. <laughs> I was yeah. supposed to be studying, but I thought, you know what's much more interesting than studying is filling in this application form. I thought it was not going to go anywhere, but it's a good use of time. Nice. <laughs> um, and yeah, just totally didn't expect it to go anywhere at all. Wow. And then found myself in that tent. And I, I'm such a fan of Bake Off. I'd loved it growing up. I'd learned yeah. so much from it. So yeah. suddenly to be in that environment, be in that tent, yeah. So it was just so exciting. That is exciting. <laughs> and it. if you watched um, Martha in the Bake Off when it, when it was live, and it, I think it was Series 5, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Um, it was why don't you put in the chat right now how wowed you were by the fact that she was on there and how naughty she is that she didn't tell her parents. <laughs> anyway, that's really exciting. So you got on there. You were kind of... It was probably a bit overwhelming, wasn't it? Being in the tent, was the pressure a lot? It was. You know what? It was quite funny because when you're actually in the tent it's overwhelming in the sense that it's so iconic and if you love baking it's yeah. like the pinnacle of baking excitement yeah but because it's not live and it's not going out at the same time and yeah. you also can't tell anyone else that you're doing it yes it's kind of this kind of mysterious vibe yeah. and it doesn't really feel real because no one is talking to you about it no one's going oh you're on the bake-off because no one knows no one knows and then three or four months later when everyone finds out that's when it just hits you like a train oh, <laughs> and wow. you're like oh my goodness and so what I let myself at in what for? point did you let your parents know oh, well they found out quite early on to be fair because that's the uh, production company phoned our home phone and said hello we'd love to talk to Martha about her bake-off application and my <laughs> parents were like Martha? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I will let this go now. Okay, so you were on Bake Off. You became the um, quarter finalist, didn't make it through, but obviously it was a pivotal point in your kind of life, your thinking. When you're 17, you know, some people know exactly what they're going to do and other people are still trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So for you, lights, camera, everything kind of taken away. How, um, how did you feel in yourself? Were you nervous? Were you anxious? What was your response kind of coming out of the, the Bake Off? I was a kind of a combination of all of those things, I think. I was nervous in the sense that I just didn't know how I was going to be portrayed or received yeah. because you can edit and anyone to become yeah. anything, really. I thought, have I been careful enough with my words? Will I come across like I'm arrogant or will I come, will they, like, will I come across as I hopefully am? Yeah. And it was kind of that unnerving feeling like you're kind of in someone else's hands I suppose yeah but I think I went into it and every even when I was on the show when I was nervous like I've been a Christian since I was um eight yeah. and my faith has been such an important thing to me and it helped me to stay really grounded in those situations because at every moment where I was feeling panicked or overwhelmed or when it was on tv and people were coming up to me in the street I was thinking no I know that God's put me here for a reason yeah that this isn't just a random coincidence and that yeah. he prepares you for what is coming yeah so I could rest quite easy in that knowledge that actually I know <laughs> that this That's isn't amazing. just random that it's not going to overwhelm and also had an amazing family and church family around me at the time as well who were really good at just reminding yeah. you who you are <laughs> yeah. because it, it yeah. is a bit overwhelming when suddenly you're yeah. shopping in Topshop and everyone's like oh my gosh or even yeah. I went to New Day. Yes. So I was actually still a young person yes. <laughs> at New yes. Day in the 15 to 18s. Yeah. And people wouldn't necessarily say something, but just around you, it's just yeah, like, this oh, buzz. this, yeah, oh, someone's here. And you felt very constantly watched. Yeah. I did struggle with it in, in moments. There was definitely times yeah. where it was overwhelming and it was hard. And being kind of the kind of recipient of a lot of online commentary yes. <laughs> is really tough to deal yeah. with when you're young and especially yeah. knowing that other people can read it, like knowing my family could read it, my friends could read it. Yeah. Um, but it kind of solidifies your identity when things happen to you yeah. that kind of, yeah, throw you a little bit off course. Yeah. You have to come back to where your identity truly is and what your giftings are and all of those kind of things. That's so great. it was helpful for those kind of things, I suppose. So having community was really important as a young person. And I think sometimes we can um, just assume because young people are often confident and um, can come over like they know what they're talking about. We've all been there. <laughs> um, actually, they still need support. They still mm. need care. They still need affirmation. Obviously, you found that in God. But also, it's important for us as people to remember to encourage 
encourage one another, young and old, you know, yeah, um, to, to keep supporting each other and leading each other to be secure in God. So you you felt vulnerable at times, but you, you knew a, a stability in God, mm. which was really exciting. But in terms of um, calling and kind of starting, waking up one morning and going, oh, I didn't know I was going to do this. I mean, obviously... You've, it's a few years on now. How has that calling developed? How have you found kind of moving from being a, a Bake Off star uh, into the stuff with Waitrose and other things that you're doing at the moment? How, how has that progression been for you? Yeah, it's been really interesting, actually, because I, with things like Waitrose, I used to work in Waitrose as a Saturday girl before Bake Off. And oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> and when Brilliant. I got my Saturday job, I was just so excited because I knew I loved food. I thought, yeah. this is such a great place to work where I yeah. get to look at all the ingredients. I worked on the cheese counters. I've got to sell all the cheese. I thought, this is amazing. Did you sample any? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I mean, like you have job. to know what to recommend. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yes. And sometimes little chunks fall off when you're slicing. Oh, and you're like, shame. Oh, yeah. Did you have off. to worry quite as much about COVID, did you? <laughs> no, back okay. in the day, yeah. <laughs> freedom of eating. Yes. Um, but no, I was so excited and I felt like that was kind of part of God's plan for me. Yes. But then when Bake Off all came along and then Waitress got in contact to say, oh, Martha, like we see that you love food writing. I ran a little food blog. Amazing. And they were like, would you, how would you feel about us kind of training you up and you writing for us? Wow. <laughs> and it was just like the biggest promotion in the world. Wow. And just so it's little, something that I might, might not have been that significant, which was mm -hmm. getting a job in my local supermarket, mm -hmm. suddenly became something really integral to my future ah, career. So it was linked. You, the, the, it was linked with the previous job that you had there. In yeah. Two. I didn't know that. Amazing. Yeah, it was kind of, well, they knew I worked there. I was a partner and worked just yeah. so very good at kind of supporting the people ah, that we work for them. Amazing. So really Really came alongside and we're like how can we yeah. how can we help you on your yeah. journey and it was just things like that where little things fall into place yeah kind of things that they said about my application form like oh we were actually looking when we were casting I didn't realize this but they kind of cast before people have applied so they know what, who they're looking for oh, before really? they get all the forms in oh wow like, well we knew we were looking for someone young who mm. lived quite close to filming so before I'd even applied yes. there was a spot for me oh wow and I think when you bring faith into that, and it's yeah. like, oh, actually, God had a spot for me yeah, before I even knew yeah. <laughs> that I yeah. would apply. It kind of blows your mind. And mm. I think I also found it really interesting because growing up, I was quite academic. I was, I loved baking, but it was much, it was my side hobby, if yeah. anything. Yeah. And at school and everyone else was like, oh, you have to go to university. You're going to be a mathematician or a scientist, blah, blah, blah. You're going to do all these other things. Yeah. And I knew I loved baking, but I just couldn't see a place for me in the food world because I, yeah. I love baking, but I don't really want to be a chef. And I'm not quite sure where this will take me. It's just a hobby on the side. Yeah. But I found that actually gifting looks different to everyone. Yeah. And I had a real passion for something <laughs> like baking. And Amazing. I thought it was always going to be an aside, but yeah. God kind of called it out on me. It was like, no, this is going to be the thing <laughs> that I use. And I always love to say to people, actually, you don't know what the thing about you that God's going to use. And it could yeah. be just your greater kind of a sport or you're really good at yeah. hosting people or then there's all sorts of things that people that God can pick out of your life and use it doesn't have yeah. to be the thing that everyone says about you like everyone's uh -huh. like you're gonna go to university and I didn't end up going to university and it feels a bit countercultural sometimes <laughs> yeah but no it's been no, exciting good. yeah I love that because sometimes we can feel like our life is already defined mm. either because of what other people are saying or a path that we might be on but actually you found God opening up doors in a different way. And it was like a desire that you had deeper than you knew that actually has been flourishing. Now, it's not all roses. No. <laughs> um, it still takes faith, doesn't it? So God has, has opened the door. He's given you lots of good things and uh, given you some steady things mm -hmm. um, and lots of opportunity to, to bake and do stuff, fill your home with lots of cookware. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> but at the same time, it, it still takes faith, doesn't it? You were telling mm. me about months uh, where it's, it the, it's tends to dip a little bit or gets, be gets more... Um, you have more opportunity, like Christmas, for instance. Um, so how do you respond to God in those moments when it's like, oh, Lord, it feels like um, the path might be drying up a bit? What do you do then? Yeah, I think as a freelancer, you have to put into practice giving everything over, giving yeah. everything back to God, knowing that it was always in the first place. Great, that's a great thing. Every time a new piece of work comes in, yeah. I have to remind myself to rejoice always, to be really thankful, not just yeah. to... Because sometimes you can either get used to it if it's a busy time yeah. or you can be really longing for it if it's a quiet time. And yeah. it's just like remembering to give thanks for every good gift. <laughs> so that's every time great. I get a piece of work, it's like, 
no, I need to be thankful. Even if I'm really busy, it's like, no, I still need to be thankful. Yeah. And yeah, just, just leaning on him. That's okay. as a freelancer, you have to learn to do yeah. that because you don't know where your next piece of work is coming from. You don't know when you're next going to get paid. Yeah. But you have to trust him. It's and true. I think especially over this kind of lockdown period, it's been a real process of learning to do that again and again and again. Yeah. Because you can kind of, I f sometimes find it easier to do it with the big picture, to be like, oh, my, I've kind of given my life to Christ and the big picture is going to work itself out. But it's in the small everyday yeah. things that yeah. it's actually almost yeah. harder sometimes yeah. to go, oh, no, actually, I trust you for this and this and yeah. this. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. And I think in this season where um, obviously the things that the big things that we normally kind of put our trust in are actually have been, in a sense, taken from us. So yeah. learning to be thankful for the small things is sometimes a challenge. Mm. Um, and just just before we close, obviously we could stand in here for a chat for hours. I have to say, the first time I met Martha, it was at New Day, <laughs> and quite annoyingly, we did a race over <laughs> over caravans and through um, a horrible um, skip that was filled with oh, disgusting stuff. And I thought, oh, I don't care. She can beat me. I don't mind. I'm just in it for the fun. And then as I watched Martha charge off a Ahead of me, I was like, I do no. care. But she beat me, which was very annoying. And oh then the next goodness. year, we did it again I on know. that, um, what was it, Le Bronco thing that we had to stay, stay on or something. Oh, and the, I was in the ball pit. But anyway, she still beat me. So, oh. quite frankly, I'm not very impressed. But um, that was so That funny. was the first time we met, I think. <laughs> I've forgotten about yeah. that. And now uh, Martha's the youth leader for Ella, which is great. And I know oh, she loves spending time with you. So much fun. But just as we close, um, there's there's something you've, an initiative that you've been involved in in Eastbourne with the Bramber Bake House. I would yes. just love you to share that um, very quickly about what that is. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I kind of knew when I got into baking that I wanted to do something which gave back a little bit. And I have a massive heart for kind of women who have been affected with injustice yeah um, and one of the biggest injustices is sex trafficking and yeah. human trafficking in general so I found this incredible charity called Bramber Bakehouse who are based in Sussex who support yeah. women who have been through awful situations yeah. and help to give them life again through baking and also kind of counseling and jobs training yeah and I get to teach the baking and do all the recipes for that and get Amazing. to know these incredible women it's such an exciting process and they're looking to buy a bakery in the next couple of months Amazing. which is so exciting so yeah such a fun thing to be involved in and as part of this and journey is that, is that something that people can contribute to or follow or yeah watch? absolutely that would be amazing and they're on instagram facebook twitter just under bramba bakehouse great and yeah they'd love your support great well i just want to say a massive thank you to martha she's been a lot of fun and i have to say let's just show some of our yeah, artwork let's have a look. here to be fair, if I've you could lift it up mine. basically <laughs> yes but this is my attempt here i've got a slightly dodgy oh, reindeer man that. and i have got some jelly tots here anyone love jelly tots they're so good <laughs> that looks amazing. look at that mr jelly that tot man like the, oh um, yeah the shrek gingerbread it man. does <laughs> doesn't it don't eat me don't eat me <laughs> what does he say i I want I to be know. a real boy. Yeah. There we go. And yeah. um, what have you got there? Uh, I've got, just done a couple of different designs. All those yes. sprinkles Can you put those towards off. the camera just okay. so this we can one, see I've your just skill? The whole thing. The hole needs to be poked through again on that one. A nice striped it's one. It's still pretty tasteful. If I flooded the whole thing, it would be totally covered, I have <laughs> yeah, to I'm say. Yeah, I'm quite happy. That, and that one's just yeah. got a few Lovely. zigzags. Yeah, nice Christmas tree decoration. Oh, thank so. you. Thank you. So maybe what I'll do is I'll post up online the recipe that you used. Yes. Um, so that you can use that if you want to have Christmas. And thank you very much, Martha. Thanks for having me. It's Bye. been great. Bye. Oh, she's such a treat, isn't she? She is really lovely. She is actually that nice. Um, and it's so good to hear from Martha about her journey of faith. Sometimes we can see people on the television, we can see what's going on, and, uh, and we can make assumptions, not really understand what's going on behind the scenes. And it's good to know that she's a real person. She has a real journey. She has a real walk of faith. She's having to work it out step by step, just like the rest of us. Um, and she, uh, she, she is really lovely to hang out with. Um, and we had a lot of fun in the kitchen the other day doing that. I, we were just listening to it and my son, Jesse, when she said about it being a bit awkward at New Day with everyone kind of buzzing about her, he was like, oh, I'd love that. <laughs> if you saw Jesse the other night, you'd, you'd know why. He's pretty confident. But anyway, um, carrying on from what we've been singing about this morning and uh, just listening even to what Martha's been talking about, about her story and her journey, I really felt prompted um, to look at the scripture this morning of Psalm 23. 
Now, last month, Ash talked about it in her interview with us. And uh, over the last month or so, this psalm has seemed to pop pop up quite a lot and I've really felt a burden of uh, this psalm being really uh, important for us in this season and um I have to confess, I actually haven't really studied this psalm before and I feel like, to be honest, I've barely scratched the surface even for today. Um, but as I took a moment to uh, look at it and prepare it and, and kind of break down those familiarity bits um, and really think, what does this mean? I felt that this psalm had something for us. So let's just read it together. Psalm 23. It might be that some of you've got Bibles with you or you've got something on your phone or if you just want to listen, that's totally fine. Um, um, I'm just going to read out Psalm 23 and then let's just see what God has to say from that for us. So Psalm 23, the New, New International Version um, says this, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why don't we just quickly pray? God, I thank you for this psalm. I thank you that it is ministered to thousands upon thousands of people over the years and that today you have something for us to draw from it. You have something to speak to us about from it. And so we just pray, Holy Spirit, for your revelation. We pray that you will bring to light the things that we need to hear today. Um, and we just pray for your breath on this again. And we want to receive your word now in Jesus name. Amen. You know, with this psalm, uh, it's, it's one of those psalms that's often read out at funerals when people are dying or maybe in a difficult situation and can be used in a secular context or in a church context. Quite often, it's one of those psalms that you hear, even people that don't particularly have a faith or know God, uh, at moments when there are a, a difficult points or at, say, a funeral service, suddenly this psalm pops up. There is something about this psalm that is extremely extremely comforting, that does something uh, that soothes us. And so I wanted to look into it a bit more. And um, in this Christmas season, you know, we're, we're coming to the end of such a strange year. We're hitting a Christmas season that we weren't expecting it to look like this. And we still actually have quite a lot of uncertainty going into the new year. So where do we kind of plant ourselves? How do we remain steady? How do we remain steadfast? How do we remain confident through these difficult seasons? Well, I believe this psalm has some really wonderful things for us to have. So why don't we start at the top, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. The opening two words of this passage are significant actually to the rest of the scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. So it's not just he is my shepherd, something's my shepherd, the man down the road's my shepherd. No, it is the Lord. I love this because everything else about the psalm that we're reading, everything else that we kind of follow through on is based on this foundation stone of the fact that the Lord is my shepherd. The one who flung the stars into space, the one who speaks and things uh, come into being, the one who actually holds this whole world in his hands. He causes everything to be in balance perfectly every single day. The one who is with us, who is everywhere, the one who is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who, who speaks life uh, over us today, the Lord, the great one, the mighty one, the king of kings, the sovereign one, the one who's in charge of everything. He is my shepherd. The Lord is your shepherd. Isn't that wonderful? Martha talked to us earlier about having that sense of God having a path for her. God had planned her steps. And the opening line of this uh, scripture really helps us to see and know this. The Lord is the shepherd, the guide, our defender, our protector, our provider. 
The shepherd is kind of a slightly old fashioned thing for us. For most of us, we don't really know what a shepherd is. You know, most of us, are we, we rock up and we get our, our meat from whatever supermarket or local butchers or that sort of thing. We, we don't really take care of sheep on the field. We might point them out to our small children as we drive by. But actually, the shepherd, uh, the shepherd's role was to keep she uh, sheep safe, was to lead them to the right pastures, make sure they went to the right places at the right time so they could be fed. The shepherd would tend to their needs. If anything was damaged or hurt or caught, the shepherd would look after them. The shepherd would guide them and they would lack nothing. They would trust the shepherd. They would follow him. They would trust him. Because the Lord is your shepherd, it means that you shall lack nothing. That's a, that's a challenging uh, statement, isn't it? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. I want you just for a minute just to say that out loud to yourself. Maybe you need to close your eyes, maybe just take a deep breath in, maybe put your hand on your chest and just consider, speak it over your, yourself right now. Why don't we just say this together? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. Let's say that together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. One more time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. This is something that we need to pause and ponder today. It's a season where it feels like we've actually lost a lot, where we may even feel like we're lacking quite a lot. Connection, work, church, maybe even food on your table. We can wrestle with the feeling that we think we are lacking stuff. What about this, Lord? What about that? I wish I had this. I wish I had that. But actually, we lack nothing because the Lord is our shepherd. And it tells us how we, how we lack nothing as we continue through this psalm. It talks about the green pastures and the still waters. Now, obviously, the psalm is still using imagery that would be understood within a shepherd's role, but it actually links in so beautifully uh, to, to what it can mean for us today, what this symbolizes for us today. Green pastures, if you see a pasture that's green, you know it's, it's well nourished, you know it's well watered, it's received the right nutrients, it's received enough sunshine, enough rain, and the green is luscious, the, the grass is luscious and green. It, it would have its appropriate amount of nourishment. There's something inviting about a green pasture. You know, if you see a big green field, either children love to play in it or you, you feel like you want to lay down in it and just relax in it. There's something wonderful about a green pasture that makes us want to um, just chill out in it. And uh, I don't know, I wonder where your green pasture is at the moment. Is it a physical outdoor space? Is it a place in your house? Is it spending time with a person? All of these things are really valid. I know for me, I love to walk down to the sea or go into the downs. I've got two kind of key outdoor spaces that I can go to where I can breathe, where I can look out at the, at the kind of expanse of space and think, yes, it's okay. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. This brings me peace. Where's your green pasture, I wonder? Well, actually, although these things are valid, Although God's given us these things in nature to help us, these, these people around us to help us, actually our true life and our true rest comes when we find our, full, our fullness and our full rest in the Lord. We, we, we discover that He is actually our ultimate green pasture, that He's the one who nourishes us, He's the one who invites us, He's the one who brings stillness. Still waters, refreshing you know, when we think about being thirsty, we want a, a glass of water. There's refreshing as we come to that. There's something very restful when you see still water, peaceful. It can, it, it's very soothing. You know, water is good for the inner soul and for the outer body. We need water to drink and we need to remain healthy with that. But there's also lots of actually good, good health benefits from swimming or floating in water. You know, often I've got friends who go down to the sea early morning, get in the cold, cold water and, and somehow it does them really good. When the sheep were thirsty, they would be taken to a place where they could drink. We need our inner thirst to be quenched as well as our physical thirst to be quenched. We need our inner turmoil to be stilled as well as the outer stuff going on in life maybe sometimes to be more still. 
I often talk about how the natural and the supernatural go hand in hand. And we speak about seasons, that we have seasons in the physical, you know, we have the summer, spring, winter, autumn. And uh, sometimes that can reflect actually in our spiritual lives. Sometimes we can feel like we're in a, a season of winter. Sometimes we can feel like new birth is beginning to happen. There's, there's buds on the trees. Uh, and so these uh, physical and spiritual things can sometimes go hand in hand. I find it interesting here that God is speaking about the natural, the green pastures and the rivers. The sheep would eat and drink at these places. And in John 6 verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. He's clearly stating that we need him to survive. You know, just like we need food and water physically to survive, we need to remain. He, he, he shows us that he is our bread and our water to live also. And actually, this for me linked really nicely into the green pastures and the still waters. The green pastures would have been where the sheep could lie down, uh, they could eat if they wanted to, the waters they could drink, but it was the shepherd who was providing, supplying all those things. And Jesus is the one today who is our, our provider of this green pasture of our food, who's provider of our still water, of, of uh, just knowing being the filling of the Holy Spirit and knowing that he is the one that we can quench our thirst from. How many of you are thirsty today? You know, there's an invitation for you to come and to drink. Maybe you're feeling like everything's crashing down upon you. Maybe you have good days and bad days like I do. Some days you wake up feeling fine. Other days you wake up feeling really bleh. And sometimes you can't even put to reason why that might be. But there's all this stuff going on around that makes us feel uh, this sense of unsettledness and uncertainty. Well, we have to come back and, and remember again, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. As we carry on in this, so he, he leads us in green pastures. He feeds us. He's our food. He's our water. He's the one who sustains us and uh, causes us to have peace as we enjoy those things in him. It then says this, he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, for your rod and your staff, they comfort me. As I was reading this, I was like, wow, there's so much packed in on here. And I really would love to develop it more. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the, the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. You know, the shepherd would lead the sheep along the right paths. And so it is with the Lord and us. The shepherd guided the, the sheep along the right way. It was a comfort for them. He led them down the right path. And, uh, and for us, you know, God, we, we like the idea of being led down the right path, don't we? Oh, yes, the Lord will lead me the right way. The Lord will give me the right direction. There's something very comforting about that, the right path. I like the phrase there. And the psalmist is actually very clever in the way that he assures us uh, that the Lord leads us down the right path. Because then he talks about the path being the darkest valley. So those two things are not disconnected. It's not like we have the right path and then we have the darkest valley. No, actually these two things are meant to flow together. Actually, he leads us down the right path and then he leads us in the darkest valley. How does that work? Surely that can't be right. Surely the, the right path, Lord, is not this one. I don't like this dark valley. I can't see. The terrain's uncomfortable. I keep falling over. I keep stumbling. It's difficult. I don't know what's around the corner. I don't know what I'm going to bump into. I don't know what's going to jump out at me in the middle of the night. This can't be right, Lord. But actually, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He guides me in the right paths even when I walk through the darkest valley, which is the right path. It's a comfort for us to know that he is the one who is guiding us. And then it says, I will fear no evil. We're taking down this beautiful narrative of assurance. The right path, the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. In another story, this might not look so good, but if you trust in the Lord today, you'll know that this is true at the core of who you are. Now, don't get me wrong. We don't always have to like the valley we're in. We don't always have to, we, we may not even feel that sense of safety sometimes. We might uh, have those feelings of fear and uh, difficulty and anxiety and being overwhelmed. 
But that's when we have to lean back into that promise of the Lord is my shepherd, so I lack nothing. So what do we do? We draw from him. We lean into him. We allow him to lean in, to, to lead us. When the uh, sheep were taken into that dark valley, it was the shepherd who would guide them, who would protect them, who would keep them safe. So they didn't have to worry about anything jumping out of them or difficult terrain because the shepherd would guide them. And it's the same for us, even approaching the end of this year. We thought we'd be out of it by now. We thought we'd have turned a corner by now. Surely it's not still going on. We're still in the valley. But actually, we can, we can rest in the fact that the Lord is our shepherd and he guides us along the right paths. Let's keep coming back to the Lord with our uncertainty, with our fears, with our anxiety, with our jobs, situations, with our health, with our families, with the reality of feeling lonely. I'm, I am so desperate to hug people. I cannot wait to hold people again. I cannot wait to connect in that way. It's difficult. It's really difficult. But what do we do when we keep coming back to the fact, the Lord, the right path, even though I'm in darkness, I will fear no evil. When the shepherds were in the fields and they were taking the sheep along the, the terrain, it would be dark, it would be pitch black, it would be uneven. They didn't have to worry because of the shepherd and neither do we. You know, I was recently uh, doing a run and I'd, I'd, I had one of those days where you dress up in your PE kit all day and you never actually make it out. Um, I've, I've done something before about being dressed in the active wear but never actually being active. I have days like that, I have to confess, but I had this challenge this month of the fact that I wanted to do 100 kilometres in a month. I wanted to run 100 kilometres in a month. And so this was coming towards the end of my time and uh, of the month and it was like, oh, I've got so much to do today I'm going to dress in my PE kit and then eventually I'm going to get out but I didn't get out until it was really dark and it's amazing how you can be running the same the, the same um, space the same run uh, in the light and feel completely comfortable completely happy you know where the you know where the bits are that you shouldn't fall into or run into that sort of thing and you follow the same path and yet when it's dark it's much more vulnerable it's much harder you feel a little bit like the floor could be a bit more uncertain you might fall over you might twist your ankle and even though I was running the same the same route I would always run I felt more vulnerable and it can be like that for us as well we might be doing the same things and being involved in the same things but because all of this uh, terrain is is troubled at the moment that we're walking through we can feel unsettled we can feel Feel uncertain but actually God wants to, us to know the Lord is my shepherd I shall lack nothing the right path the darkest valley I will fear no evil and then it beautifully leads us on to why I've talked about the, the shepherd guiding and the shepherd leading and we know that because it says that he leads us on the right path but also it says you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me now, again, this is a kind of odd language for us, you know, to think about a staff. You know, what's a shepherd's hook got to do with anything? But the shepherd would use his staff to kind of nudge the sheep on the right path, to keep them safe, to protect them, maybe even to hit things. I don't know. I, I have not chatted to a shepherd for a while. So, um, but there's that sense of the staff being something that would steer the sheep, that would protect them, that would guide them. They might have needed a, a good bit of guiding sometimes or maybe just a little nudge. But, the, but there was that knowledge that the shepherd's there because they could feel the, the rod. They could feel the staff there guiding them and holding them. And, and it might be that at the moment we need to know uh, the, the staff of God kind of comforting us, bringing comfort to know he's there, he's there, he's there. And actually, you know, worship is a wonderful way of doing that because when we worship, when we lift our gaze, when we sing songs to him, when we remember of his wondrous works, which we were talking about earlier, actually that's also another wonderful way that he nudges us that he reminds us that the Lord is in control, that he is faithful, that even though we don't know what this terrain looks like, even though we feel like it could crumble around us at any point, actually the Lord sees everything. We can't see, but we don't need to because our shepherd is working on our behalf. Our shepherd is interceding for us. Our shepherd is guiding us when we're in the dark. Then it moves on to the last bit where it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. <laughs> I, can't, 
<laughs> I can't carry on, just wait a minute. My youngest son is just opening the door. Jude, darling, I'm right in the middle of a preach. Live. What's the matter? I don't have my shin pads. He doesn't have his shin pads. Go and get them from Ella. No, but Ella doesn't have them. <laughs> the red ones? No, the red ones are not the ones that I use. I use the orange ones. <gasps> okay. Um, uh, <laughs> a good parenting moment. I said I'd get everything ready for his football and I've forgotten the shin pads. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Um, anyone want to go and help? Jesse, could you go and I just go help him find them quickly? Yeah. Thank you, because Dad's behind. Uh, can you go around that way? I'm not sure if I can. Oh, no, you're going to have to. Okay. To go through. Excuse me. Hurry. Could you look at my bum? <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> so, apologies, 16 year olds. <gasps> this is going well. Okay, the no, shepherd, no. the Lord is our shepherd. He guides us along right paths, even the darkest valleys. He is with us, he is, uh, so we don't have to fear any evil, we don't have to fear any worry, because he's with us, he's protecting us, he's guiding us, he's nudging us, he's steering us, he is, he's with us. And then it says this, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, this is one part that I really wanted to get to today, the table. We um, have got a time and a season where usually our table might be full of food. Maybe some of you actually don't know what it is to have a full table and, and I pray that you will know that. Um, but for many of us, we would fill our table with good things, with things that we know our guests would love to eat. Um, I've got a large family and so they would come and they would camp out at our home and uh, we just spend a lot of time feasting around the table. And with Nace family, we, we, we spend a lot of time feasting around the table there's something wonderful about when you eat together and you enjoy food together and you celebrate with one another and actually a lot of stuff around us can disappear because we're focused on this moment now I wonder what your table looks like uh, maybe maybe you've got your favorite things I know we've been talking about mince pies already <laughs> hopefully you won't be sick of those by the time you get to um, to Christmas Day why don't you put in the chat what your food might be like the concept of having a table before the presence of my enemies what does that mean it, you know, what does it mean when we see a table there? Well, we're all in a battle. Different wars are going on in each of us, troubles coming against us, fear, anxiety, finance, thought life, behavior issues, and obviously the obvious one right now, lockdown, feeling separated, sad, suffering loss, grieving, it's difficult. But David is reminding us here that God has a place prepared for us in the middle of it a place of goodness, a place of nourishment, a place of delight. How can this be when there's so much going on? Well, we're reminded to pull up a chair, to sit, to rest, to enjoy, to wait and enjoy him. We're reminded to enjoy time with the king, to fix our attention on him. Um, if Nathan and I go out for dinner, um, you know, we, it's really important that we put our phones down, that we don't spend time looking at everything else, that we actually focus on one another and enjoy one another and enjoy the food that we're into eating together, that experience. And, you know, God inv invites us to come in the middle of all the chaos, in the middle of all this trouble, to sit down and uh, to enjoy him and to fix our attention on him. And he's saying, I have all that you need in this season. This table is full, it's laden with stuff that you need in this season. In a time uh, where, um, you know, usually these sort of things around us, Christmas, food, family would bring us comfort, you know, those things are taken away. But God is still giving us um, this opportunity to sit and um, enjoy him around the table. He wants to invite you today to come and draw all that you need from that, all the nourishment you need, all the food that you need, all the resources that you need. Why? Because the Lord is your shepherd, so you shall lack nothing. Because he leads you in green pastures and still waters, he gives you the nourishment and the food that you need there. Because he guides you along the right path, and that even when we're in the darkest valley, we know that he is with us, he is our comfort, he will not let us go. He will keep us and protect us and shield us, and then right bang smack in the middle of all this chaos, in the middle of all this difficulty, there's this incredible table prepared for us that says, I will enjoy this in the middle of 
everything else. I will enjoy you, Lord, in the middle of everything else. That gives us that sense of assurance that we can fix our attention, we can fix our eyes on Jesus, and we can eat the food that he's prepared, eat the things that he's given us uh, to be able to have the grace for today. Maybe it's a, a, a huge cake full of grace. Maybe it's a huge cake full of mercy. Maybe it's the fact that you need to receive forgiveness today. Maybe it's strength. Maybe it's compassion. Maybe it's kindness that you need. Maybe it's just the ability to get out of bed today and you need the strength to be able to get up and think, today I'm not going to just stay in bed all day. I've got to do something. If you are at that place where you stay in bed all day, I'm not saying that you can't do that, but, but maybe there's just things that you need to draw, you need to eat from this table today and find in God rather than yourself. You know, the sheep don't really make a lot of choices by themselves. They, they basically follow one another and that they, they follow the, sh- the shepherd. You know, God has given us um, minds and uh, hearts and he has given us, we're not robots, but actually God is giving us this imagery really so that we learn how to rest in him, so that we learn how to trust him, so that we learn how to follow him and, and rely on him for all of our needs. It's a wonderful season to remember that God is with us. One thing added to this just before I move on to the end is that um, a friend of mine was talking to me about the, the table and she said, sometimes I feel the pressure that I have to stop in the middle of everything that's going on. I don't have time to sit. I don't have time to eat and wait and rest and do all those things. I I find that actually a massive pressure. And uh, I could relate to that because I remember when um, I had Jesse, my first child, and and he was about three months old. And I remember feeling like, Lord, I've I feel like I've barely spent any time with you. Like I'm praying here and I'm singing there and I'm having a a moment of worship here and a moment of prayer there and time with you there. But it doesn't feel like I'm really sitting down and enjoying a nice three course meal with you right now. And I remember him just speaking to me about his grace in that season and that sometimes, you know, he reveal he can give us like everything that we need in, in one breath. Um, but also sometimes he wants this three course meal. And I want to encourage you today that this is not supposed to be a pressure. It's not supposed to be that if you don't stop and you don't wait and you don't sit, then you've failed. No, actually it's an invitation that there is more for you and to find your resources in God. And my friend used it as a buffet. She, she liked the fact that she could keep coming to God for the things that she needed each day. And it might be that this season she couldn't actually sit down for very long, but she could still find her strength in God. And I want to encourage you today, of course those analogies can be taken too far and to to the extreme and in the wrong way, but actually there's a sense really that God is, is inviting you to this table to fix your attention on him, to find all that you need in him to uh, find the resources that you need in this time and know that you will be filled. You know, the cup overflows. It's not just, God's not just giving you a stingy amount or pouring a tiny bit into your glass or putting a small bit on your plate. No, he's, he's generous. The cup overflows. He fills you up. He fills you up. So I want to I ask you today, are there things that you need to uh, just lay down and focus your intention on God? Are there things that you need to pick up from that table today? Are there moments where you're basically trusting in yourself to be the shepherd, trusting in yourself to be the guide, and you need to stop today and think, no, actually, I really need to remember the Lord is my shepherd. Are there things in you that really, um, you know, you, you feel that you, you need to uh, just remember that how to drink and how to draw from him? You know, God has great nourishment. God has great riches. You know, we were singing out the riches in Jesus because of what Jesus has done. We can do that. We've been talking about Jesus, the light of the world. He's come. And this last bit in the psalm, I noticed um, uh, it says this. It says, um, the Lord is my shepherd. Then it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides uh, guides me along the right paths. So it's all about him. He does all these things. And then it comes to this personal bit, for you are with me, you, your rod, you prepare the table, you anoint my head with oil. And these things are really crucial for us friends to remember that it's about him and allowing him to to do it and us resting and coming under that incredible covering of of those things. I'm just going to let Jesse in now because this is 
he's waiting outside and we can't do the next song without him because we need the words. So, you can come in, Jesse. This, this has not gone quite according to plan. Um, a few distractions have arrived. <laughs> But you know what? God is still here. He's still working. He's still doing things. We can't open the door. <laughs> God, <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, this is our seventh coffee morning. For those of you who know, we're, we're generally fairly smooth at these points. We've had a couple of blips along the way. But... Um, but generally, we've done all right. And this morning, it's it's classic, isn't it? You've just got to laugh. It's just one of those things. We're here as a family, aren't we? And, um, you know, God, he wants you to come today knowing that he has everything that you need and allowing that to be a comfort for you, allowing that to bring you hope. And uh, I just want to encourage you right now. Maybe you just want to open up your hands to him. Maybe there's things that you need to lay down. Maybe there's worries and fears and anxiety. Maybe it's about a job situation. Maybe it's about finance. You know, God wants to um, just remind you that the Lord is your shepherd and you shall lack nothing. I had a funny moment last night where Nathan and I were praying and we were bringing a few things before God and some of them were our anxieties and our worries and uh, <laughs> and uh, just kind of being honest before God as we were coming into this morning. And um, all of a sudden my watch just said, it's going to be okay. Or it's okay, didn't it? What did it say? It's going to be okay. I don't know why, but it, my Siri on my watch as I was praying just <laughs> shouted out, it's okay. It's going to be okay. And, uh, and it made us laugh so much because it was like the Lord is speaking. But, you know, he wants you to know that today, that the Lord is your shepherd. And so he's with you and it's going to be okay. Um, and I want to encourage you with that, um, not because I want to be flippant, but because he is the Lord. So why don't we just respond right now uh, and just ask the Holy Spirit if there's things that we need to lay before him, if there's things that we need to just um, again give to him and just sing this song. We're going to sing Psalm 23. It would be very inappropriate to sing anything else, wouldn't it? So we're going to sing this song by Stuart, uh, The Lord's My Shepherd, uh, together as we're coming to a close. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you alone. And I will trust.
Jesus will lead me home, and I will trust, and I will trust in you alone. Yes, I will trust in you alone. For your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will mercy for your endless mercy follows me your goodness will lead me home. yeah god we pray that over this season we will know uh, the joy of this incredible truth that the lord is my shepherd and therefore i lack nothing therefore you provide you protect you supply you lead us, you guide us, you keep us. And I pray that we will know this. And I pray that uh, in those moments where we feel like our supply is low, where we feel like we're running out of energy or strength or ability or capacity, I pray that we will learn to uh, come to your table, that we will learn how to drink from you, we will learn how to eat with you and to really just draw from the resources that you have given us in Christ. I thank you that doesn't mean that we suddenly spring out of bed and we're, you know, happy all the time. But actually it's about finding that peace and that stillness and that hope and knowing the light and the love of Jesus Christ in our lives and re relying on you, God, to be our strength. And I pray for that for my friends and my brothers and sisters that are watching this through this season, that they will know you near them, that they will know that you are with them. I ask for this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, whether this is your first time or your seventh time or somewhere in between, we want to say thank you so much for joining us on these Saturdays. It's been quite a journey. It's been quite an adventure for all of us over the last few months. I, I know that, um, you know, things have developed and grown and we've been trying to follow God with what to say and what to sing. And uh, we are so grateful for your support. We're so grateful for your kind words, for your stories that you send in. We're so grateful for you showing up and uh, joining joining us on these mornings, joining us on the Worship Wednesdays, joining us for the gigs that we've done. Honestly, it's a huge privilege for us to be able to be part of this. And, um, and we're just so grateful for you. We don't take you for granted. We don't take you... Um, joining us for granted and I do just thank you I want to say thank you as a, as when this is our last coffee morning of 2020 we've got a new coffee morning coming in January um, January the 9th so you can get that in your diaries because there probably won't be much time to advertise it between now and then but you know I'm believing that you'll be with me and um, I want to say thank you to all who came on Thursday night to the carol concert it was such a wonderful special evening the children were involved and uh, again there were a few mishaps here and there but actually God came and I know that it was a really encouraging night and we had a lot of fun uh, with our Christmas cracker jokes and uh, various other things that people were putting in the chat so thank you so much for being up for it for singing in your houses and really just having a blast with us on Thursday night we really appreciate that and just to remind you that we've got a new carol uh, album that is out um, I'll just grab the CD it's just here I'm just lost my microphone. Um, it's this, it's here. So we have CDs available on from our we, uh, website. It's called Come and Adore Him, and it's got eleven carols on there. Nine of them are familiar, and two of them are ones that Nathan and I have written. It's basically just piano and vocals. It's really a reflection of what we've been doing this year. So we wanted to give you something to listen to over Christmas that would be a blessing to you with that. And also, uh, if you don't want to have a CD, if you haven't even got a CD player, uh, it is available on digital platforms. You can buy it on various digital platforms platforms or listen to it on Spotify. All of those things are available and um, we just really want it to be a blessing to you over this season. And there's some other things there. I was going to show you my new Release the Joy gold mug, um, which has been, uh, you know, just trying to, it's taken a lot of um, work to find and get that mug and work on this hug in a mug kind of thing and get the concept. And then yesterday I dropped it and it smashed everywhere. So um, that's not so great, but there will be some coming next week. They are arriving and I will post them out as soon as possible. So thank you so much. We will see you Wednesday.
today, it's Wednesday morning. If you can't make it Wednesday morning, then catch up later. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe to YouTube, Spotify, whatever is your kind of currency, whatever you're working with. Please do that because it blesses us, but it also helps to bless other people. Um, So please keep doing that as well. Thank you, friends. Lots of love and uh, see you next week. Darkness quit.